Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the US markets for Thursday's trading session, the 1st of December 2016. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers. You can download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now let's um, try and decipher as to uh, which direction the US markets are headed today, given the weakness yesterday, specifically with the NASDAQ. Okay, so um, let's try and understand. Uh, at present, we have uh, European markets certainly under uh, some pressure, and that's mainly led by the uh, Brexit concerns in uh, the UK. The FTSE 100 certainly feeling the uh, the the wrath uh, of uh, Brexit uh, and uh, the potential Brexit negotiations going haywire. And the reason why I say haywire is that uh, the UK referendum was basically uh, voted on in order to uh, number one avoid paying. <clears throat> Brussels, okay, and to uh, divert those funds at home, uh, which are desperately needed for the NHS, schools, etc., roads, and so on and so forth, okay. So, in order to obviously achieve independence and dictate where those funds are going to be transferred to, as Mr. Farage's famous claim that uh, obviously if you were to exit the EU, you'd have 200 million pound or 300 million pound extra for the NHS. Now, that's absolutely that's a total lie, okay. So, and he's actually retracted that statement as well. So. It doesn't seem to be the case, okay? So, given the fact that David Davis has mentioned that the uh, UK will uh, will be happy to uh, to uh, basically uh, fund the uh, EU, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Certainly does um, uh, certainly does uh, throw into question the concept of uh, voting for an exit from uh, the EU, okay? Uh, it certainly is very strange, okay? Now, uh, very hard to understand, very hard to decipher. And that's what's leading the uh, actual do uh, US uh, dollar uh, lower and uh, the uh, sterling higher versus the dollar. Now, pound rallies on, on soft Brexit hopes trading at highest levels since Trump's uh, shock Brexit win. Now, the pound is certainly on tear this morning on hopes of a soft Brexit after Brexit. Minister David Davis said Britain would consider making payments to the EU budget in return for access to EU markets. So... Very strange, okay? Very, very strange. It certainly seems to be a U-turn by the UK politicians. Not only that, Mr. Boris Johnson yesterday stated that uh, he would uh, vote in favour or he would argue in favour of freedom of, of movement. And again, that's been the sticking point with regards to uh, uh, Merkel's uh, uh, stance and the UK stance. Uh, and now uh, we voted <coughs> uh, for, uh, uh, for Brexit on the basis that less immigrants would enter this country. And that we'd have our country back, etc., etc. That they were the weird and strange arguments, okay? And they blame the immigrants for all the mess at home and so on and so forth. And and that was really the the philosophy and thought process behind that. Now that obviously is now put into question as well, okay? So from a hard Brexit to a soft Brexit. So a hard Brexit obviously causes sterling to move lower. That helps exports, and it gives a potential boost to the FTSE 100. And now a soft Brexit obviously causes sterling to move higher. And that certainly does put a damper or uh, certainly exerts a bearish force on the FTSE 100. Now, that is fine. In a normal market, that would be fine. But the fact is that we had stronger Chinese data out overnight. We had stronger uh, European data out this morning. Strong, strongest economic data since January 2014. Chinese markets higher overnight as well. We have an OPEC deal. As we all know, the FTSE 100 is very heavily, heavily commodity related. So we have an OPEC deal in place. And uh, OPEC obviously is considered to be bullish given the fact that oil is now trading uh, above $50 at present. We have uh, Brent trading above 52 Okay, you've got a potential move in copper as well on the back of stronger Chinese data. So, uh, again, bias remains bearish from my understanding, okay, in my interpretation. And uh, therefore, one would expect the FTSE, uh, the US markets certainly move higher as well. Okay, so number one argument is OPEC deal, certainly bullish. Number two, stronger Chinese and EU data this morning. So even Japanese data was stronger overnight as well. Uh, Shanghai <coughs> and the Nikkei higher as well. Okay, we did have a potential concern with regards to Ukraine and Crimea, etc. in Russia. And that certainly seems to have dissipated and ignored. Uh, and obviously the next uh, potential shoot drop at the moment is this Davis, Davis and Boris Johnson comments. Okay, that's causing a sterling to spike. And obviously, it's causing weakness in the uh, the actual European markets at present because it creates uncertainty with regards to Brexit. Now we do have the uh, the uh, Italian referendum looming, uh, obviously on Sunday. So again, you are expected to see some potential risk coming off. But nevertheless, like I said, it, it has been uh, <coughs> shielded by the ECB saying that they would backstop Italian bonds, 
and they would actually intervene if anything were to go uh, astray. So <clears throat> my my argument and my understanding is that U.S. markets, from a biased perspective, is certainly going to start off very positive. So let's bring up the actual Nasdaq itself. Now the Nasdaq itself certainly flushed yesterday quite Im impressively. Okay, you can certainly see a bearish engulfing candle there. Now that's on the back of uh, potential personal spending. <coughs> Also, we all know Mr. Trump is bearish for tech, but that's not stopped the uh, technology index certainly moving higher. So, for now, uh, from a technical perspective, 60-minute chart, you're into gap fill. Certainly close the gap, you're into 200 MA, and therefore you one would expect a bounce. Okay, so certainly expect a bounce on the uh, on the actual Nasdaq itself. Okay, now in terms of the bounce, previous support equals resistance here and here. So you are looking at turbulence at uh, 4840. And then turbulence at 4850 on the Nasdaq. So watch out for those two zones, okay? And given the fact that we're into gap fill, therefore you'd expect a potential bounce. <coughs> excuse me, a potential bounce on the Nasdaq too. Uh, looking at the 10-minute chart, no real discernible pattern to be honest with you. Nothing at all that I can think of, okay, at present, uh, in terms of the uh, Nasdaq. Other than obviously gap fill, really is the ideal pattern, and, and that's what I will focus on for now. In terms of the uh, uh, cross-referencing the uh, the Nasdaq with the biotechs, let's bring up the biotechs, certainly flushed into 200 MA. Biotechs have certainly led, led the healthcare index certainly lower. You are into that 200 MA on the 60-minute chart, so therefore look for potential support. Okay, folks, uh, on the biotechs. So let's look at semicons as well. Semicons certainly flushing, finding weakness here on the steady chart. You do have gap fill support on the semicons as well, so again, looking for potential support. So it's whether or not the gap fill can certainly hold on the Nasdaq. If it does, then you are looking at equities moving higher for the U.S. Okay, let's bring up the Dow now. Dow in, uh, in industry, Dow average. Uh, now the Dow average certainly did put in a potential topping tail yesterday, so certainly cause for concern. 60-minute chart certainly seems to be pushing lower now. If we do continue lower, you do have support here at 10, uh, 19, uh, or 80. Currently, we're trading around the 19, 130 zone. Okay. Uh, on the 10-minute chart, certainly finding weakness, but you are into gap fill support on the 10-minute chart. You do have horizontal support as well, 19, 110. So <clears throat> whether or not the uh, the actual rally in the Dow can uh, can sustain itself and continue, that certainly is the question at present. Okay. Let's just cross-reference that with the Dow Transportation Index. Let's just bring up the Dow Transports. Okay, so Dow Transports at the moment, certainly a pullback uh, on the weekly chart, daily chart. Let's just bring this up. A pullback, nothing uh, <clears throat> of any real concern, okay? The only uh, factor here is that obviously a stronger oil price does hurt transportation stocks, so just bear that in mind, and it can be distorted to a large extent there. Now let's bring up the uh, Russell 2000 now. Let's bring up the Russell, the IWM. Uh, the 60-minute chart certainly has broken out of that uh, bullish channel, so again, indicating weakness. Daily chart, certainly three bearish candles in a row again. Potential concerns here and potential weakness and some potential slowdown. Uh, 60 minute chart certainly needs to be watched very carefully in order for a sustained move. But from my perspective, you are into number one on 10 minute chart, you are into gap fill support. Okay, not only that, fundamentals remain bullish with Chinese data stronger, EU data stronger, Asian markets up overnight. You are looking for a potential uh, bounce, from my understanding. Uh, and given the fact that uh, you can certainly see that the Russell is into support, gap fill support, certainly would argue for the argument is stronger for a bounce. Okay, let's bring up the uh, the actual S and P 500 now daily chart at the moment still above the previous resistance. Okay, we did put in a topping tail yesterday on stronger volume, so again, take that on board. Okay, certainly take that on board. 60 minute chart at the moment you do have support on the uh, S and P up to 2197. If that fails to hold, then you have next support at 2195. Okay, and then if that fails and you are looking at potential gap fill below, which is at 2182. With an OPEC deal and stronger Chinese and EU data, it's very, very hard to understand and fathom that that potential, uh, that would actually occur. Okay, that's my understanding and my interpretation. So you're looking for a bounce here at 2198. If we fail, then 2195, and then looking for a potential pop. If we do see a pop, then you are looking, uh, you are going to be limited in terms of a potential pop here. Uh, you clearly have resistance here at 2205. Watch out for 2205 and watch out for uh, 2206 and then 2208. So this downtrend bearish trend line certainly is, uh, is is one to watch. Okay, and watch out for those zones above 2205, 2208, and then obviously ultimately 2213. Yesterday we certainly closed that gap at 2213, 2214 on an OPEC deal, and then we started to, we certainly slammed into sell orders. 
and the market has been moving lower. Now, just remain uh, cognizant of the fact that you have uh, a gap at 21.82, so we really need uh, some real bearish data to trigger that. Uh, but from a 60-minute chart, at the moment, it's more, more or less trading sideways. No real catalyst to, to send the S&P 500 lower, okay, from my interpretation uh, at present, okay. But all eyes on the Dow, certainly showing some signs of weakness. But Dow transport certainly is uh, skewed due to higher oil prices hurting the potential uh, transportation sector, okay. In terms of the VIX, let's bring up the VIX for you folks, okay. So uh, daily chart first and foremost. Obviously, we are making lower lows and lower highs, so... Nothing to get excited about here from a uh, trading perspective. Uh, 60 minute chart is something to get so, so excited about given the fact that you are looking at potentially making a base. Okay, it'll be interesting to see where the VIX opens up today. Just bear in mind that you do have two resistance zones above. Obviously, you have gap fill as well, which is uh, over here. Okay, that's the level. All right, so again, they, they are the zones. Okay, that's what we're looking forward to in terms of uh, US markets. If the VIX gets into this uh, key area, 23.8 or 24.2, certainly will be in a, a zone for me to uh, potentially uh, uh, go uh, along the S&P 500. So that's certainly something I'm going to keep an eye out for going forward. Okay, so I think I've covered everything. Okay, uh, energy sector really will be the key. You are looking for a breakout in the energy sector really to lead to, uh, from my perspective, you are going to hit that 200 MA, potentially even move higher. OPEC deal certainly is bullish for commodities, and commodities should technically lead the uh, the equity market higher, from my understanding, and certainly does give the catalyst for the S and P 500 to continue to new highs. That's really my understanding. If it was the other way around, obviously, then I would expect the S and P to reverse and start to sell off, but that's not the case. Okay, so commodities certainly can breathe a new uh, lease of life into U.S. equities, and you are looking at a potential move higher. Okay, I think that's a good summation then of U.S. markets. Uh, again, watch out for those key zones on the S&P 500. You have uh, 21.98, then you have 21.95 as support. If that cracks, then you are opening up that 21.82. If those two hold, then you are looking at 22.13 again and potentially new highs. Okay, especially given the fact that oil price is certainly very, very bullish at present. And again, something not factored in. Okay, so you are looking for a move higher. Uh, on oil, you are looking for a potential move of 50, 51, 52, 53, even 55 from my understanding. Certainly a uh, a potential base, uh, certainly a, a solid base being built and confirmed on the uh, price of oil. Okay, on that note, be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of the bonus. Goodbye now.